Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from an anonymous donor, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, can you do a video for me about how women do the same jobs as men, but still expect men to do more of the work? And here's an example. I work in emergency medical services, and there are many times when I'm working with a female partner. And they demand equality, but always ask men to do the heavy lifting or harder physical parts. And it's usually the smaller girls that most men would consider cute, and not the large or average women that ask. And I refuse their requests by always saying, it's an equal opportunity employer, and we are all expected to do the same work. And I don't want to demean you by treating you any less or weaker than men. So no, do the heavy lifting yourself. As a man, I'm not getting premium pay for having to use more of my physical strength, so no, lift it yourself. It's frustrating, but most people don't even think about this. Most men are still so enthusiastic to demonstrate their manliness to just about any average or cute-looking girl. It's once again a double standard of women demanding equal pay for equal work, but they're trying to use their female ways to make men do more of the work. Another example I often face is when my female partner and I are lifting a heavy patient onto a stretcher. It takes two people to lift the stretcher or patient directly. But there are often times where women either don't anticipate a lift, or they position themselves to the lighter end, feet on a man and upper torso on a woman, leaving the man to lift the bulk of the patient's weight, the torso on men, and hips slash legs on women. Or even worse is when they actually say, okay, can you get the heavy end? You're a lot stronger than me. Strength advantage has nothing to do with men being expected to do more for the same unionized pay rate. Often guys end up with more frequent back injuries because they have overworked or overexerted themselves more frequently. And it's ironic as well when smaller, more petite women, who may not be able to truly be capable of doing the job, get hurt backs because of the nature of the work. These smaller women's physiques aren't designed for the task. So the smaller women get herniated discs, torn back muscles, shoulder injuries, etc. And I'm not saying that women cannot do the job, there are women that do it very well. But the double standard, oh that double standard. It's once again women demanding equal pay for equal work. But then trying to use their female ways to make men do more work for them, so they don't have to do the equal work part. Thanks again Sandman for taking a leader-like role, and helping more men realize the truth about feminism and female nature. Cheers. Well, thanks for your comments and questions, Mr. Anonymous. Personally, I have known women that have gotten back injuries from moving objects from one office space to another. This was back in the 90s before companies here in Canada had to deal with many worker compensation claims from back injuries from having to move their own work tools and equipment around from office to office. Since then, companies here have hired moving companies comprised of men to move computers, printers, and boxes from one workplace to another. And workers aren't even allowed to move their own moving crates if they're full, unless, of course, they're empty. With regards to work injuries, it's not simply about lifting heavy people and objects once in a while, but it's also about repetitive injuries or strains. Even lifting empty stretchers and defibrillators over and over again as a paramedic can cause injury on in some of these smaller women, like you stated. And these smaller women get more injuries, costing the system more in disability claims. And it becomes harder than ever to prove that you've been injured on the job. And I know the average claim takes about two years to clear in Canada, and you have to hire a lawyer and see the right doctors to prove your disability. And in the meantime, you aren't getting paid because you aren't working. So once you use up all of your sick days, you're basically still technically employed, so you don't get unemployment insurance or severance until you basically prove your claim. You are stuck in limbo. No money coming in, and the government does whatever it can to delay or deny your claim as long as possible. They even try to send you back to work with altered duties. It used to be very easy to get a claim pushed through when it was mostly men in the workforce. But since women learned that men had been getting disability payments, they too have been trying to get the same thing. So a box of files lifted over and over again by a weak woman can cause repetitive strain injuries, and thus she's eligible for what amounts to an early retirement. And at the same time, if a guy is a construction worker and gets injured, he has to go through the same intensive process of proving his injury. Many construction jobs involve contractors hiring workers off the books, and these guys usually don't pay the workers compensation. And if these guys are injured in their 20s, they essentially suffer for the rest of their lives. We have a culture of male disposability, and doesn't anyone else see anything wrong with this? If that construction worker has a family and a mortgage to pay, and is basically the chief breadwinner in the family, do you really think that his wife is going to let him sit around and wait two years for him to fight for his right to get the disability money? Or do you think she'll put more pressure on him to return to work? 
and then if he doesn't return, she'll threaten to leave him or divorce him. I once knew a guy that got injured on the job and had a massive hernia. We used to call him the herniator. All that was separating his guts from the outside world was a thin layer of skin on his stomach, because his stomach muscles were completely torn apart. Yet he still went to work each and every single day because his wife demanded it, and he had a soccer ball worth of guts on the left-hand side of his body. During the Second World War, the Germans spread stories about the Polish cavalry charging German panzer tanks. And this did happen near the Pomeranian village of Krajanty on the first day of the German invasion. The Polish forces were still not mechanized, so they charged the Germans, but had to retreat due to heavy fire. And they didn't know how well the Germans were armored. And the reason I'm bringing up this story is that the Germans laughed at the Poles and said they were charging their horse cavalry against German tanks. They were saying that the Polish didn't have the tools capable of getting the job done, and yet there they were, fighting a suicide attack against the Germans. The historic accuracy of this tale is quite debatable. But my point is, you don't send a 140-pound woman into a burning building to save people, day in and day out. She might be qualified to do the job, but should she? Even she probably understands that she's better suited to shoot a fire hose or drive a truck instead of going into buildings and breathing in the toxic fumes and risking her life. And because she does less of the work, the male firemen have to do more heavy lifting than when there were more men doing the same job. And the same man that went into 60 burning buildings in the past may actually have to go into 80 per year because the fire department hired more women. And the additional smoke that he breathes in will certainly lower his lifespan, so that a woman can have the privilege of calling herself a fireman and receiving the same type of check as he does. But what she doesn't seem to see is that his wife and child, if he has them at all, will lose a father and a husband far sooner because of her actions and desires, and because she wants to prove that she can do everything that a man can. But oftentimes she receives the title and the money, but not the same responsibilities. Whenever I go to the gym, there are tons of women that lift those tiny blue and pink little girly weights, so they can add tone and condition their arms. They so desperately want to prove that they're equal to men, but God forbid you should laugh at one of them lifting their little dinky weights. You see, if their arms get too big, then they'll be perceived as less feminine, so they have to walk the fine line between definition and muscularity. When you go to the gym, most women with higher sexual marketplace value are often the ones lifting 5 pound weights. And with regards to lifting as an EMS responder, a woman that gets a job as a paramedic or police officer has to be strong enough to lift a dummy during her testing and they have to repeat these tests at regular intervals, once every so often. But being a paramedic or fireman means that you have to constantly do the job. What if as a fireman you have to go up into the same building three or four times in the same day? You see, these tests are designed to see if you can lift the object once or twice, but what if you have to repeat the procedure at least half a dozen times? I've got a couple of friends that work as volunteer firefighters out in the country, and they say there are no women volunteering to help them. But whenever a small township becomes a city and starts to get paid firefighters, women often line up for the jobs. But where were these same women when it came time to volunteer for these same jobs? They weren't there. Now that money is being offered for the position, they show up demanding equal hiring practices. Women like this are greedy to no end. But when the risk of human disposability is there without pay, they're often nowhere to be found. Far too often a woman's greed knows no limits, but her self-esteem is very easily bruised. A woman that surrounds herself with men that are disposable and willing to do more work with her elevates her feelings of self-worth. But if a man acts like he's the center of attention in such a situation and can get away with it, then her self-esteem drops. One time a female neighbor called me because the landlady next door had fallen in her apartment. She was probably dead earlier in the morning, and 911 asked me to flip her over and check her vital signs, and I tried moving her. I tried moving her and she was about 170 pounds, and I could barely move her 3 inches. As I was doing this, three women stood around me not helping, telling me what to do, all in a state of panic and shock just watching and telling me exactly what I should be doing. Fortunately I heard the ambulance outside the door, so I let them handle it. That's when I learned that it's not that women are just more physically and emotionally weak at certain things, but they actually have a hard time accepting negative and traumatic emotions. And Mr. Anonymous, I wonder how many of your female colleagues are suffering from post-traumatic stress. With regards to my own work life, I've done videography and photography for almost two decades now. When I worked in television, women would often get the studio jobs, where the cameras, control rooms, and set were already set up. But most of the guys were put in trucks and sent on location, where we actually had to lay down the camera cables from the mobile studio trucks to the cameras. Sometimes we had to run cables for hundreds of meters for hockey and soccer matches. 
and I only ever saw a couple of women working on such crews. Women were always indoors and always in jobs that required minimal lifting. The producers probably knew that they would just slow the process down, and that they would make more work for the guys that were working the job. So it was ultimately in our favor. We would just have to lift even more cables and cameras than these women, because the women would probably be avoiding the jobs. Today the equipment is far lighter and I see more female photographers than there were around a couple of years ago, because the technical knowledge and the camera equipment is much lighter. But with regards to shooting video, women are still rare because they have to haul around lights, tripods, audio equipment, as well as the cameras. One time I was at a shoot and was shocked to see a girl that was actually lifting tripods and being helpful. I almost fell in love with her right there and then, and nearly married her on the spot. But all kidding aside, most women don't work at video work because of all the heavy equipment that they have to carry, as well as the technical knowledge that they have to learn. It's my experience that women take the path of least resistance when it comes to lifting weight in the workplace as well as the gym. Anyways, that's it for my ramblings for today. Thanks again to Mr. Anonymous for his donation, and thank you everyone else for taking your daily dose of red pills. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.